As a broadcast meteorologist, one of the terms I use most often is high pressure and low pressure. But the other day I had somebody ask me and they said, what does it actually mean when you're talking about pressure systems? And I couldn't concisely explain it to them, which told me I needed to break open the old weather textbooks to relearn how pressure works so that I could understand it in a way that anybody could understand. And throughout this process, I came across this model in one of these textbooks that's a perfect visualization of atmospheric pressure. And it even also explains why the wind blows. So we're going to draw these air columns, but before we do, we need to understand something about the gas law. Because the gas law is going to be the tool that we're using throughout this entire explanation. And the gas law, written in its long form, is pressure equals temperature times density times a constant. Now the form of this that we're going to be using is pressure is proportional to temperature times density. And that's the symbol for density. It's pronounced rho. So how we're going to think about this is if you were to hold, let's say, temperature constant and density went up, that would mean that your pressure went up. Now on the flip side, let's say temperature goes down and density stays the same, that means your pressure has to go down. So this is what we're gonna be using throughout this visualization. We're going to manipulate different factors of this equation and then see how it changes a column of air. So let's turn that off, start a blank one, and let's draw two columns of air. So column one and column two. Now we're going to assume a few things about these columns. One is that they are the same width. One is that the, they are the same height. And then three, we're going to assume that they have the same number of air molecules in them. So if they have the same number of molecules in them, that means our surface, oops, surface pressure is equal. Because pressure is really nothing more than just the weight of the atmosphere above you. The cool way to think about this is it doesn't seem like the air weighs anything, but if you were to take a one inch column from sea level to the top of the atmosphere, it would weigh about 14.7 pounds. And it's the weight of all of those molecules pushing down on you that is your air pressure. So we're starting off here saying the surface pressure is equal. And then we are going to change some things around. So we have pressure equals temperature times density. We are going to, well, we'll take a different color here. Let's go use like a green. We are going to increase the pressure and hold the temperature constant. So what's a way to increase the pressure in, we'll use our column on the right you increase the number of molecules in that column because then that increases the weight above you and that's literally the definition of pressure. <laughs> so if you look in that column on the right, now compared to the one on the left, it makes sense that our density went up. It is a lot more dense in there. It's just like if you had 100 people at a party versus 10 people at a party, you would be a lot more tightly packed in there. All right, now let's do the opposite with the other column. So we're going to say pressure goes down. So I can't really draw this in, so we are just going to erase some of these molecules. So in that case, what happens? Our pressure goes down, and we're saying our temperature stayed the same. That means our density has to go down. And that makes perfect sense. We now have, we're using random numbers here. We have four air molecules in the same space that used to have eight. 
so our density has decreased. So if you think about pressure at the surface, our pressure has increased here and our pressure has decreased here. And our density has increased here and our density has decreased there. So hopefully that makes sense. That is a good way to understand how pressure and density are related. Now let's bring temperature into the mix. So let's remember our two earlier columns where they have an equal number of particles in each. But now let's cool down column one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our temperature decreased. And now let's crank up the temperature in this other column. So in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> okay, so actually I want to erase this and write it in the law form again. So again, temperature went up over here. Now why did I draw this column on the right bigger and the column on the left smaller? It's because as your air molecules heat up, it expands. The reason it expands is because those air molecules are bumping into each other a lot more. And then the reason our cold column decreased in size is because those molecules kind of condensed together. It actually reminds me a lot of like what someone will do in a cold plunge. They'll tighten up their body and they'll make themselves very small. Versus if you're tanning in the sun, you might be starfished on your beach towel, just totally spread out. It's kind of the same thing that these air molecules are doing. So now let's think about what is going to happen or what is happening with our model here. So pressure equals temperature times density. So looking at this one on the right, our temperature went up. What happened to our density? Or no, no, no. We'll, we'll say what happened to our pressure? Well, our pressure is interestingly the same. And don't think that's a minus, that's a constant symbol. Our pressure is the same because pressure is just the weight of the atmosphere above you. In column one, we have eight particles. And in column two, we have eight particles. So pressure is going to be equal. So what does that mean for our density? That means our density had to decrease. And that makes sense because density equals mass divided by volume and our volume got bigger in this column on the right. So in other words, as our temperature goes up, it spreads out and our density decreases. Now let's look at another example, but with our column on the right. And let me just erase this real quick. Okay. Now back to our blues. So we have pressure equals temperature times density. And then I'm about to get to the explanation of how this actually explains wind. So on the left, our, our temperature went down and our pressure stayed the same. So our density increased. And I think intuitively that probably makes a lot of sense to people. So now let's actually use this to explain wind. So we're going to draw a line across these columns. Pretend that's a straight line. And count the number of molecules that are above us. So this one has two molecules above us and this one has four molecules above us. We know that pressure is the weight of the molecules above you. So in other words, at an even level, this one now has higher pressure on the right and lower pressure on the left. Now the atmosphere doesn't like to be in an imbalance like this. 
So what it's going to do is try to turn that four into a three and turn that two into a three. So that is going to lead to some of these air molecules on the right moving over to our column on the left. And that is what we call wind. Now, what's also interesting is what's going to happen to our surface pressure if this actually happens. So let's say it works and we erase one of those, we are, oh wait, and we draw another one in over here. Okay, so we have three and three. Our pressure at the surface increased there and our pressure at the surface decreased there compared to the original columns because we now have less weight above us at the surface. So hopefully we didn't go over too much throughout the course of this video. The key thing to remember is that pressure equals or is proportional doesn't exactly equal because remember we have that constant in there is proportional to temperature times density. And this explains how all of these variables are related to each other and then also explains why we have wind. So hopefully I was able to explain this well enough for you to be able to understand it. It's one of the first times I've tried to explain this since reading it in the textbook. If it didn't make sense, let me know in the comments and I'll remake this video, maybe read the textbook a couple more times. But overall, I thought this was a pretty cool idea, so I just wanted to share it with you guys. Thanks for watching.